What's up, FRT community? December 31st, 2019. We have less than 12 hours to go before we're in 2020. And that means for some of you, your graduation year has arrived. Four and a half months, give or take a few weeks, when you graduate in May, and you're done. Can you believe it? It's crazy to think that, guys. It's crazy to think that two years ago you started this journey and now you're entering into the last leg of it. Remember, when marathon runners are running, they don't wait till the end to slow down. They push hardest at the end, okay? So just the words of encouragement as all of you go into or some of you go into your final semester, okay? Now, I got a request here uh, through my email that said, hey, can you break down mechanical ventilation just super simple? Okay, you just make all the settings and all the variables and all that stuff make sense. Now, I've never done this before. Just explain everything there is to explain about mechanical ventilation. And I'm going to miss something because I'm doing it off the top of my head. Uh, we're just going to work through it together. Okay, but I'm going to do my best to break down and to simplify what all of this stuff means. Okay, so we talk about mechanical ventilation. Um, and we're not talking modes here. I'm not getting into specific modes. I already have a video over modes. I'll get another one up actually. I'm going to actually redo that video. Uh, but, but currently there's already a modes video. But this is going to be more specifically like what does tidal volume mean? What does plateau pressure mean? What does flow mean? Those type of things. Okay, so hope you bear with me. Hope you watch it. And let's see if we can get through this. When you think about mechanical ventilation, you have to think first of all that all you're doing when you take a sick patient and put them on a mechanical ventilator is now breathing for that patient. Now, think about how we breathe. We have a certain number of breaths that we take every minute. That's called a respiratory rate. And then each time we breathe, we take in a tidal volume. And that is tidal volume. Okay, That's the set amount or the, the total amount of gas that we breathe in every time our diaphragm drops. We take in a certain amount of gas and then we exhale it. Sometimes we breathe in deep. Tidal volume is very large. Sometimes we breathe in small. And, and, and tidal volume varies. So, so tidal volume is just that amount of that one breath. One breath is what your tidal volume is referring to. Now when you ask what does that tidal volume refer to? Is it air? Is it gas? What is it? Well, it's a, it's a mixture of gas. When you, when you take a mechanical ventilator and you set it up, you plug into an oxygen um, an oxygen outlet on the wall and you plug into a medical gas outlet on the wall. Now medical gas is the same as room air. It's 21% oxygen, rough, roughly 21% oxygen, roughly 79% nitrogen, and a few other trace gases. Now when you, talk, when you plug into the oxygen outlet, you're plugging into 100% pure oxygen. Now when you set the ventilator to a certain FiO2, then the vent blends the oxygen with the, with the medical gas and delivers a gas mixture of oxygen and room air to deliver that set FiO2 that you've dialed in and told the ventilator to give. Okay, So when we talk about tidal volume, we're talking about a set amount of one breath. Gas delivered for one breath. When we talk about respiratory rate, we're talking about how many breaths are going to be given within 60 seconds. Now this tells the ventilator how often to give a breath. So if you tell the vent to give 10 breaths per minute, then it's going to say 60 seconds divided by 10 equals 6 seconds. So it's going to give a breath every 6 seconds. Okay, so this is also the... the um, the trigger mechanism for your time, your your time triggered breaths. Okay, so if the patient's not breathing, the vent says, "Okay, give ten breaths a minute." That means give one every six seconds. Got it. Okay. What if I set it on twenty? Well, then you do sixty divided by twenty, and you're going to get a breath every three seconds. Okay. So that makes sense, right? So we know respiratory rate. We know tidal volume. We know tidal volume, let's just say we have a tidal volume of 0.5 liters, okay, or 500 milliliters. Understand, you got to be able to go between liters and milliliters pretty easily in the field of respiratory therapy or you're going to start saying things like, like, I have a tidal volume of 500 liters. No, you don't. You're killing somebody. So you don't have a tidal volume of 500 liters. What you have is 500 milliliters 
or 0.5 liters. Okay, so be comfortable moving in and out of those. Okay, now I'm going to work in liters right now. This is 0.5 liters. When you set a respiratory rate and a tidal volume together, these will equal a minute ventilation, a minute volume. Now we do this right now also. We're breathing normally. So we take a breath in, we let it out. We do it again in five, six, seven seconds. Take another breath in, let it out. At the end of a minute, we have moved a total volume that is represented by our minute volume. Now we can calculate this by doing respiratory rate times minute volume equals a minute volume. So this person's minute volume equals five liters. That's 10.5 liter breaths within one minute, and that gives us a minute ventilation of five liters per minute. That's a good minute ventilation, okay? Assuming it takes care and controls your CO2 and your pH where it needs to be, okay? So those are some of the big things that you first need to grasp. Respiratory rate, what does it mean? Tidal volume, what is it? Minute volume, what is it? I'm telling you guys right now that what I just put on the board right now, in my opinion, is the cornerstone of all formulas in respiratory therapy. You cannot be an exceptional respiratory therapist without understanding minute ventilation and this concept right here. Because otherwise you go out there and you have a patient breathing 20 times, 24 times a minute, and you say, oh my gosh, they're hyperventilating. But... Their tidal volumes are only 150 mLs. So if you do 24 times a tidal volume of 150.15 liters, I can get my calculator here, you're gonna see where they have a minute ventilation of 3.6 liters. Then <laughs> this patient is not hyperventilating. Hyperventilation is the result of an increase in minute ventilation that drives your CO2 down. Not an increase in your rate alone, not an increase in your tidal volume alone, but an increase in your minute ventilation that causes your CO2 to go down. That's hyperventilation, okay? So don't think that this is hyperventilation because it's not, okay? So you got to understand minute ventilation and how respiratory rate and tidal volume play in to to uh, affect minute ventilation, okay? Now, once we give a rate and a volume, let's just say we're in volume control, then we have our, our minimum minute ventilation set, then the next thing you need to do is ask yourself, how does the vent know when to give a breath? Well, that's called trigger, okay? Trigger is what starts each breath. Now, if the patient's not breathing, then this vent up here is a time-triggered breath. But the patient can also trigger a breath, and they do that by either taking pressure away from the circuit, which is pressure triggering, or they can suck flow out of the bias flow from the circuit, and that's flow triggering. So that's what starts the breath. The next thing we have is cycle. This is what ends inspiration. In mechanical ventilation, inspiration is active, exhalation is passive. It's kind of like spontaneous breathing. It, we actively inhale, but then we passively exhale. So this, what cycles depends on what mode you're in. I told you we weren't getting into modes, but cycle can be after the volume has been delivered, the tidal volume. It can be after the eye time has been reached. So a couple different cycles, depending on what mode you're in, can affect that, okay? Now, um, when we talk about pressure, okay, because this is just like when you put pressures in the tire, tires on your car. The more air you put in, the higher the pressure goes, correct? So no difference here. You take a closed circuit. You put a ventilator on the end of it in the tracheal tube with a cuff that's inflated and has a good seal. The more volume you put in, the more pressure will result. And when we talk about monitoring pressures, there's several of them we monitor. We monitor peak pressure. We monitor plateau pressure. We monitor mean pressure. We typically set a peak. And those are our four main pressures we monitor. Now, the other one that's gaining grounds and becoming to be more popular is driving pressure. So I'll talk briefly about that one, okay? So let's just talk about peak inspiratory pressure. 
This is when you give a breath, the pressure will rise until that breath is delivered and then stop. And then it starts to fall. The highest the pressure gets is your peak inspiratory pressure. That's the pressure inside the lungs. Okay? Now, I'm going to go more specific because it's not just the pressure inside the lungs. It's the pressure within the airways of the lungs and the alveoli. Now, when we talk about plateau, this is when you're going to hold a breath. At the end of that breath being delivered, you're going to perform an inspiratory hold, and you'll see pressure drop from peak and come down the plateau, and it'll hold there as long as you hold that breath. That is a representat that's representative of just the pressures within the alveoli, not, the, not, the, not air moving or the gas moving through the airways. So plateau equals alveolar pressure. Peak pressure equals alveolar pressure plus airways. Okay? And then mean airway pressure is just the average of all the pressures throughout the entire cycling of the breaths. That's it. It's just like your mean average at the end of a semester. Take all your grades, add them up. Your average is your average. It's the same thing. Okay, the higher your peaks are and the higher your plateaus are, then the higher your mean airway pressure is going to be. The lower your peaks, the lower your plats, then the lower your mean airway pressure will be. Okay, when we talk about peak, this is something we set. This is a positive end expiratory pressure. This is to prevent the alveoli from completely collapsing at the end of exhalation. So we don't let that happen. So we hold pressure into those alveoli so that instead of them going, oh, I'm going to take a breath now. Now exhale, and they collapse to nothing. Now we say, let's put a peep of eight on there. And we start here, and then the vent says, give a breath. Now exhale, and the vent, and now they'll like come back to here. And that's the result of peep, okay? Let me give you an illustration of what this looks like. I'm running out of room here, but I can do it. That's a pressure waveform. This is peak right here, okay? This is plat. Peep is right here. This is your peep. And then your mean falls within all of this area beneath here. Okay? Now, I mentioned driving pressure. Driving pressure is becoming kind of an area of focus and study and researching ARDS and improving outcomes with ARDS and reducing um, mortality with ARDS and things like that. But driving pressure is calculated by subtracting your plateau pressure, take, I'm sorry, subtract, taking your plateau pressure and subtracting your peep. So the difference here is your driving pressure. And you want that to be minimal as well. High pressures are bad. That's, that's what it really comes down to. Now there's cases like this case right here. You can tell that you have a high peak and a lower plateau, you can tell that this case, this little difference right there tells you that you have an increase in airway resistance. And we'll talk more about that. Actually, I already have another video on it. So we can talk about that on another day. Okay. But when you're talking about mechanical ventilation and just some basic things that you need to know about it. Okay. We talked about rate, tie the volume together, make minute ventilation, trigger, starts the breath, cycle, ends inspiration, and allows exhalation to begin. You have your pressures, which are the result of your volumes. Now, if you go to pressure control, then you set your peak and your volumes become variable, which makes your, your minute volume variable. So you just got to understand what mode of mechanical ventilation is. But just to define some of these terms, that's what it is. Remember, peak airway pressure is the highest pressure reached during a breath. It includes the gas moving through the airways and against the resistance of the alveoli. Plateau pressure is holding it just in the alveoli and gives you representation of just alveolar pressure. Mean is the average of all of it. And then driving pressure is the difference between plateau and peep. And then peep we typically set to hold open and to prevent atelectasis in between breaths from happening. Okay. FiO2, we talked about it briefly. That's the, the blending of oxygen with, with medical air to deliver a set FiO2. So you want to deliver 40%. You got to blend 100% with 21% and you'll get 40%. That one kind of makes sense. Okay. 
There's more stuff out there on mechanical ventilation, but off the top of my head, if I'm telling a student who has no idea what they're talking about mechanical ventilation, except they have the basic framework for it, then this is where I would start. I would say, does this right here make sense? And hopefully they say, it does now. Hey guys, happy new years. Go have fun tonight, but be safe. I don't want to hear about those tragedies, okay? So be safe and have fun as you welcome in a new year class of 2020. Get excited, guys. Best wishes.